land of the rising sun, east of the Niger, from the continent of Africa, a ministry was born to change the world. Dominion mandate is God's universal human right. This is the right he gave to every human being on it. The universal human right is the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is a calling given to mankind. That mandate crowns you a king over creation. Welcome to expand your world with Pastor David Ogwili. Now, Lord, rule in the midst of your sins. Rule in our lives. Establish your counsel in our lives. Establish your counsel in this place. We overrule the counsel of the enemy. We overrule the forces of darkness. We overrule everything that is earthly and human. As we superimpose your kingdom in this place. We turn into motion the power of your kingdom. The forces of revelation we activate in this place let light turn on let your people see let them be able to see let everyone gain insight into the amazing wonders of your kingdom amazing riches of your glory we give you praise we give you thanks thank you for making all things well we ride in your glory we ride in your grace Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Everyone ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everyone ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Everyone ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everyone ought to know. Everyone ought to know who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. He is a lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. strong sense of urgency in my spirit there is something that is God is trying to get across to us. He's calling us back to prayer. I'm not the one saying it. He's the one and he's also talking to me about that issue. God is calling us back to prayer. He even showed me some of us that are prayer bankrupt. There is spiritual bankruptcy. It begins when your account, your prayer account is, is deficit. 
It means now that in the spiritual realm, you're open to all sorts of assaults and attacks. There is such a thing as prayer covering is raised over people. It lasts over a period of time. It needs to be sustained and sustained. If you don't, after a while, you wear out the ones that are there. Prayer is like incense. It's like a smoke that must constantly cover us if we are going to be kept safe. Is the economy of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God demands that revenue from the earth. If he's going to intervene, that kingdom will help humanity here. When a nation lacks a prayer covering, all sorts of demonic activities begin to happen there. When a church lacks a prayer covering, when a family lacks a prayer covering, when a marriage lacks a prayer covering, when an individual lacks a prayer covering, they become susceptible to demonic attacks. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. One of the translations said a house of prayer for all peoples. So first it's a house of prayer, then it's a house, you know, for the individuals, it's also a house of prayer for nations, for society. You don't expect President Jonathan to generate enough prayer to keep his presidency safe. It's the church that must do that. If this leadership will succeed, it's the church that must protect it and get it in prayer. Let me show you something in the book of Timothy. Before I get back into the, the other elements, Baridisco Borostamuna Kephestostos, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Therefore, I has heard that first of all, the most important meeting in church is prayer meeting. That's where genuine spiritual growth takes place. Studying educates the mind. Prayer educates the spirit. It's hard for me to pray and not write. Because once I start praying, I'm in a classroom. The Holy Spirit starts talking. If you stop hearing from God, the issue is that you stop praying. If you don't know what to do, the issue, the sickness is in your prayer life. 70% of life problems are direction problems. That's why God made that 70% of the gifts of the spirit are gifts of intelligence. The power gifts are only three. Healing, working on miracle, and gifts of faith. The rest are gifts of intelligence. They are meant to help you hear and receive direction. Genuine security is 70% intelligence, 30% firepower. It's not guns, they're carrying guns. You know, like you have mobile policemen standing there. That is second side of, intel of security. If you are going to succeed in life, it depends more on getting accurate direction and following it than on just what God would do. When we come to prayer, our idea is to get God to do. That is to exercise power. But the move of God is 70% intelligence and 30% power. So prayer is primarily not to get God to do something, but to get us to know what we should know. Prayer is the secret of divine intelligence. Your antenna gets sharpened and you can hear and receive what you need to receive. And then on that moment you act on it, the rest is history, success. It's one thing to pray for God to provide a husband. It's another thing to know who the husband is. To choose the right husband. It's one thing to pray for God to give you a wife. It's another thing to be able to know who your wife is. Psalm 
70% of life problems are wisdom problems. They're problems. That's why you notice that decisions are very critical to success in life. Decisions determine destinies. You're where you are because of some decisions you made. If you're going to get to where you're going, you have to make the right decisions. How do you make it if you don't have the right information? Intelligence is the basis of dominion. No government can go far without it. And dominion is exercising governance on behalf of God. It's extending the power of God's kingdom to the affairs of life. When we talk about the dominion mandate, we are letting you know that you are in government. You are a man under authority and a man in authority that God has set on earth to rule creation on his behalf. Your government will not go far without intelligence. You need CIA. You need a central intelligence agency. And the chief CIA officer is the Holy Ghost. You have to know. Do you know how much power knowledge gives? The CIA is more powerful than the U.S. Army. Government depends on that more than they depend on the military. The president depends on that. Your life will be messed up without spiritual intelligence. My Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him yet. The Bible said he has revealed them to us by his spirit. If not for revelation, I will be stagnating. But any time I finish a phase, the Holy Spirit shows me what is next in store and guides me into it. But I'm helpless. Without divine guidance. And the only way I assess it is in prayer. Let me read this. I exhort as first of all, uh, prayer and supplications and intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men. The reason God wants everybody to be saved. So when we pray for our nation, we pray for salvation of the nation, the salvation of the people. There are 170 million people here. Salvation for those that are under all kinds of false beliefs. And that salvation comes as the veil, the blindness on their eyes is lifted and they can see. The gospel all of a sudden makes sense. The level of influence you're going to have in this city, in the north, in this nation, is going to be determined by prayer. In every service, among the things that happen, it's not just praise and worship. Prayer must be raised for your city. Prayer must be raised for the mass multitude of people that are unsaved. That's how the church grows. After praying for the salvation of the masses, the second element Paul said that must be tackled first of all. He said first of all, is praying for those in authority. Look at it there, verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority. Mm -hmm. The person in charge of the federal capital territory is a subject of prayer. Those who pray for those in authority are the ones that prosper most in that particular geographical setting. You want to prosper in your country, start praying for. I have found out. You pray for people after a while God gives you access to them. It's a principle. It's a principle. Daniel did not start meeting Nebuchadnezzar by trying to create long leg. It's by praying for the government. It's by praying for the government. After a while, doors will be open for you to do business with the same. Because God rewards everything he instructs us to do has a reward. You want to do the biggest contrast in this city. Start praying for the government. Start praying for the government of the federal capital territory. Start praying for the different ministries here. Start praying for the high commission. You want to have things to do with international 
agencies. Start praying for those high commission. Start praying for those organizations. Start praying for United Nations. Start praying for AU. You are not just going to walk in there until something shifts in the spirit. It's not going to shift in the physical. Prayer grants access not only to the almighty God who is the most powerful person in this universe. You can gain connection with the almighty God and become an influencer with God. The Bible calls it men that have power with God. But the same way you can have influence with men. Start praying for leadership of your organization and see what will happen. It might not happen immediately. There are sometimes I, I do this and I get instant result. But most of the time I realize it's the seeds. The seeds have been sowing in that direction. Start praying for the management in your company and see what will happen. You're always on the receiving end of negative decisions. When they want to downsize, your name will be number one. You don't have spiritual influence on that organization. You are just a canal person who worked there. You have no influence on that organization. Study the book of Daniel. Every president, every king, if you want, that rises in Babylon, in Persia, they will pick Daniel and make him the numbers. Number two person. You work in government, you keep your office and your position through prayer. Not by trying to do eye service. That president will come and go. The next president will come. They will have you back in Asorok. The next one will come and go. The next one will come. They will invite you back. If it's just mere connection and contact, you go down with the government that goes. Spiritual dominion trans transcends administrations, human administrations. It doesn't terminate with the exit of a particular manager. It doesn't go because your boss was transferred. It means you did not secure it in the spirit. For all that are in authority. God will not tell you to do something that is not beneficial. God is calling Abuja Church to an extended season of prayer. And what he said is that there are major things he wants to shift to the church. The way has to be paved for those things to land. Promotions. There are mind-boggling things that heaven is trying to shift. God has made up his mind. Prayer will make the way for it to happen. There is a new level coming to this church. There is a new level coming to the individuals. There is a whole new a season of refreshing and outpouring of God's goodness coming to the families. Prayer will open the door for it. Your family have stopped having morning devotion. Start one again. I'm talking to you by the spirit of God. I'm talking to you prophetically. There is an angel that has been dispatched to come and knock on your door and bring some things. Prayer is what will open the door to allow him to do his work. Those that will not understand what is going on are going to lose out. Not because God doesn't plan, have a plan to bless them. There is something that is going on now. You need to adjust spiritually. Repent of your sins. Turn away from the wrongdoings in your life. Turn your face on the wall and seek God's face. Not for one day. Not for one week. An extended season. Add fasting to it. Even if it's one day, every week, you take it out to fast. Normally when we teach people the discipline of fasting, we instruct them to start with three days. Usually, three days, their body will feel the heat. Your spirit will be released to do business with God. After you've mastered the art of three days, then extend to seven. And I don't advise anybody to fast without drinking water. Your fast could be till evening. It could be till three. I don't care. But fast. It could be the whole day. I don't care. He said, Pastor, can I, that's what some, one guy was telling me in Lego, can I pay you to fast for me? <laughs> I know that people can fast for people, but that guy was just being spiritual, 
spiritually lazy. I was sent by God to warn him to get out of his spiritual bankruptcy. The account he has with heaven, the prayer account is zero. It's in the red. What has been sustaining him is every time he goes to church, the few prayers of others and God and the pastor and the angels will manage to carry him through another week. There is nothing in his account. He is spending resources he does not have. Jesus made the provision. Prayer makes the withdrawals. When faith is exercised in prayer, then your life will be glorified with the beauty of what Christ died for. When you pray for yourself and you take care of your own life, there is only one place left through which the devil can still torture your life. The people who have authority over you. Your husband, your government, your boss, your parents. That if you still live with your parents, if you are left home, you live alone, your landlord. If you now have your own house, your boss in the office, the police on the road, you will look for centers of authority that is uncovered and use it to frustrate your life. And the issue, God gave us command to pray for those in authority. If you are under any form of authority, what you get from that authority is decided by you. When we don't pray for those in authority, then we get the government we deserve. Can I say it again? A nation gets the government they deserve for their disobedience. When we pray for those in authority, then God is able to extend his own government through whatever system that is there to make sure that peace, freedom, and liberty is guaranteed to the people. For example, he said uh, part of the reasons why we should pray for those in authority so that we may lead a a quiet and what? Peaceable life. What is he talking about? He's talking about security. He's talking about peace. He's talking about liberty. I know that most of us here don't know the value of liberty because we have it. So we take it for granted. When you are married and you have a good wife, a good marriage, your husband loves you, you don't know the value of liberty. You take it for granted. You just go anywhere you like. They buy you whatever you like. You think that's how life is. And some of us, after a while, we even stop being grateful. You take it for granted. Get ready. You're going to be a candidate for satanic visitation. Liberty is protected and guarded by prayer. Everybody now is claiming it and naming it, claiming my car, claiming my wife, claiming my husband, claiming a job, but they've forgotten that the nation is the institution that carries everybody. That your car will not happen if there is war. That your new job will not happen if there is national crisis. That your new whatever house you are claiming will not happen if the economy breaks down. You will start losing your house. You will lose your car. National peace and security. How are you going to do business? You guard your national peace and security with prayer. Look at the seduction that has occurred in the church. Everybody's praying for their car, for their wife, for their husband, for whatever. The me, me meeting until the ground under them caves in. A nation is protected through a prayer covering. There is a white smoke. It has the color of Shekinah that covers a nation in the realm of the spirit. Where that thing is, demonic activity slows down. Where it is absent, new demons will come to network with the ones that are already there to bring about problems. A dark cloud comes over that nation. When it comes, the Bible has a word for describing it. When the bright cloud of God's glory is over the nation, he said they live under an open heaven. 
That means the blessing is coming on that land. God is blessing that land. The rain of heaven is falling. Things are progressing. When the other one comes, they live under a closed heaven. Demonic powers have blocked the space. Individuals can be under closed heaven. Families can be under closed heaven. The prosperity of the family stops. The progress stops. Problems everywhere. Because God made us priests so we can raise smokes from the altar that provides us shields and covering. You don't know the value of liberty until you lose it. Talk about just physical liberty. See how you walk around, use your leg, go to the orthopedic hospital and see somebody who's been there lying on that bed. The legs are hanging for the past 12 months. They have the same leg now, but they can't use it. They're under constant pain, excruciating pain. They have to have very strong pain relievers in their system all the time. As that one is wearing out, they have to inject a new one. That's just physical liberty. You don't know. You can move around freely. You can, you can go about your business. You can go home and sleep. Wake up safely. You don't have a clue. It's national prayer that guarantees and sustains that. Go and talk to the people in Rwanda. What happened? One, one day, they woke up. The country they've known all their life turned to another thing. Prayer towards the plan of the enemy. And guarantees the liberty of God's people. Not only to worship, but to live a peaceful life. To prosper and not have anybody harassing them. If we have one or two of you, or some of you who are old enough to have been adults during the Biafran War. During that 1967-68 69, 70. Maybe you lived in the northern part. When all of a sudden, the Nigerian that just finished rejoicing six years ago that we got independence turned to that cloud formed over the nation and the next thing. At that moment when people are running Heather Skater trying to find their way back home, who is talking about his car now? Who is talking about his house? Who is talking about did I sell market or did it sell? Who is talking about employment? There is a post-war generation who have never seen major crisis. Maybe those who have lived in the corner that have seen will know the value of what I'm saying. When you don't pray For those in authority, you get the leader you deserve because God makes sure you are punished for your disobedience. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. The spiritual world governs the physical world. First Chronicles. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number them. Whenever a nation gets to that point where the spiritual atmosphere has been drained. That's the grace over that nation is drained because, you know, grace is supplied through prayer. Grace is supplied also through the humbling of oneself. For example, when a nation humbles themselves before God, seek his face, is, you know, grace is not just what we merit. Grace is God's favor, God's blessing resting on that land or the individual. When he's dried up because people are busy with their activities. Maybe they are doing well. They are busy enjoying themselves. Going about their normal thing. They are forgotten to pray. What happens is that new demonic powers gain access. Problems that were not there will be created. Because the spiritual world can create problems in a second that was not in existence before. Somebody just sleep, went to bed, normal, woke up, a big tumor has grown on the side. Spiritual problem can, the spiritual world 
you know, you have negative and positive supernatural. The negative supernatural is the one surrounding the earth, is the closest to the earth. We talk about the prince of the power of the air. The atmosphere, the immediate atmosphere surrounding the earth is where the negative supernatural is. We talk about principalities in the heavenly places. They are the ones close. Because they fell from the positive supernatural and they were cast down. So they set up their abode around the earth. But the positive supernatural which is in the third heaven through prayer comes and covers the earth and prevents the interference of the negative supernatural. Their dominance over families, over institutions, over churches, over nations. There are wicked spirits in the atmosphere, in the heavenly places. You don't want them to be the ones creating the atmosphere over your marriage, over your life. They can drive people crazy. They can turn that your good husband that you think is a church boy into another nightmare. They can turn that your wife into something else. They can turn a well brought, chi- brought up child. The father's pride. Oh. That this girl that was so well trained into a heartbreak. You see, human beings are not meant to stay for an extended period of time on that demonic wavelength. It, it, turns, it, it turns a man's life upside down. It messes the person up. Because when they are bombarded consistently with this thing, the behavior changes. Because people's actions are product of thoughts, but thoughts are spirits. Words are spirits. Those two come from this other realm. You see, words are spirit, thoughts are spirit. They are wavelengths. When a negative wavelength bombards a man for concentrated over a period, extended period of time, the behavior changes. That's why you have to keep the right atmosphere around you. Prayer is what creates that. The atmosphere for prosperity. The atmosphere for progress. The atmosphere for revelation. The atmosphere for liberty. David went and numbered Israel. And look at what happened in verse 2. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the go number Israel from Beersheba unto Dan. Bring me the number of them. Verse 3. Anyway, Joab tried to argue with him. The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more. But my Lord the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then doth my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to a whole nation? Because what a president does, a governor does, is not private. He affects the whole state. He affects the whole nation. But look at verse 4. David will not listen to advice. He's under satanic influence. This is the man of God. Remember, he's a man after God's heart. Once prayer shield is lifted. He's a man after God's heart. That loves God. Wants to do his will. Look at him here now, doing the opposite. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, so they went and did exactly what he said. Verse 7, God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. Whenever we read that, that's how the Old Testament puts it. In the Old Testament theology, you don't see demons. If an evil spirit does something, the way the Old Testament theology will write is the evil spirit is from the Lord. It's not God that did the smiting. What happened is that what he did opened the door for demonic powers to come in. It was when Jesus came that he tried to explain to us that the spiritual world and the activities that come from there is not all from God. That there's somebody who comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. When you see evil happening, it's not God. But it's coming from the spiritual world. So that's why they used to put all of them to him. Look at the next verse. 
David said to God, I have sinned greatly. I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away with the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Obviously, God forgave him, but he didn't forgive the nation. The nation paid. God, nothing happened to him. Verse 9. The Lord spoke to God, David, saying, go tell David, saying, thus said the Lord, I'll offer you three things, choose one of them. Anyway, he gave him punishments to choose. That showed he was being lenient anyway, because God doesn't need to consult you to punish you. He said, I'll allow demons to torment your nation. Or I'll allow your enemies, the Philistines, to come and afflict or you let me punish you myself. And David said, uh-uh, you, are, you are my God. I want to be in your hand. I don't, don't put me in the hands of demons. Don't put me in the hands of men. Somebody said, my, hand, my life is not in the hands of men. My life is not in the hand of Satan. My life is in the hand of my maker. When you've done something wrong, go settle with God. Don't let the devil come in because if he, if he is allowed to come in, the case becomes another thing. Settle it with God. If people usually stubborn people that will not humble themselves and repent, a third party will be invited in. This family business. David said he chose wisely. He knows that God, even if he chastises you, he's trying to correct you. He will not take it too far. The Bible said those that he loves, he what? He chastises. I have a list of what is called spiritual, 12 spiritual disciplines of a spiritual man. 12 disciplines of a spiritual man. You know, one of them is endurance. Knowing when you brought chastisement. So you just go through it. The, because it has a, a, a benefit. At the end of it, you, be, you get promotion. You become more mature. You cultivate character. Area of your life where you were weak and vulnerable, you stabilize in it. There's an attitude of going through that. But there are people who resist chastisement all through. So they incur more one. They don't learn anything. They don't. They don't become better. There are other spiritual disciplines. We're talking about one of them, prayer. We're talking about fasting. We're talking about studying your world life. We're talking about a couple of them meditation, and all of that. They make spiritual giants. They create spiritual giants. You see other ones like Titan. Verse 14. The Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. Okay, David has prevented demons from coming to do their job because sin brings them. He said, no, we don't want them. Okay, let the Philistines and these enemies come and do their job. He said, no, Lord. He said, God, do it. So God now assigns an angel. The Lord sent pestilence upon Israel and there fell of Israel. How many people? 70,000 people. What did they do? Nothing. Who did the offense? The president of the country. Who are the ones suffering? The citizens. You know, dominion is a combination of natural and supernatural. If I'm to talk about the natural, we'll talk about voting the right person, making sure that you don't sell your conscience, let politicians buy you. Because you vote for the wrong person, you sold away your liberty. You... <laughs> This post-war generation in Nigeria, they don't know the importance of liberty. Oh. Because I travel, I'm on mission. I'm visiting countries where all sorts of things are going on. When you come back to a place like the way you have liberty to worship God, liberty to pray, you don't know the, what it means. Have you met a, Christ, a Christian woman whose husband is in the occult who will not allow her to pray, to read her Bible, to go to church, and she is constantly under torment for trying that? You don't know the importance of liberty. You don't know. You can't give, you can't tithe. 
Some of you now, your husbands are wicked people. And you have a scent in your house you don't know. That's why you don't pray for them. Man. You don't. You don't have preach. That's why. If that continues, there is no way. The spiritual law will pay you for it. That's the way God designed the universe. The revenue the kingdom of God demands from earth is prayer. Whenever heaven does not get it, some consequences will be the result. The rainfall will cease in that environment and the heaven will close. So extended period of suffering will follow. Torment, harassment of all types. And usually people like that, they run around looking for who is troubling them when they are paying for their disobedience. Whenever a nation is enjoying peace, good leadership, there is something covering that nation. It's not just because the president you have is such a nice guy. That's part of it. You need to select. There is a natural side and the supernatural side to dominion. You have to select the right person. But even a good person like David will misbehave when he is not under the right spiritual influence. This thing I'm telling you happens to pastors. It happens to ministries. It happens to families. It happens to businesses. You as a believer, you have a company. You don't know. Even if it's once in a week, beginning of the week, have an hour, 15 minutes devotion. Let the staff come to work by 7. They didn't pray till 8. Pray for the organization that is paying you. If you leave them, they will just go there and pray for themselves. And leave the aircraft that is carrying them on the journey. Until the Wahala starts. This is a giant aircraft called Nigeria carrying 170 million people. We can't afford to leave it uncovered. Seventy thousand men died. Give me verse fifteen. You know, an, an angel of the Lord was sent to Jerusalem to destroy it. As he was destroying, the Lord beheld and he repented of the evil, and said, "The angel that destroyed it is enough. Stay now your hand." But by this time, how many people have died? 70 million people. Watch Egypt and see what is going on there. Don't follow public opinion. Most of the things that are popular in society are wrong in sight of God. The Bible says, and the devil that deceived the whole world. That's how gullible the masses are. For some reason, they have no protection against spiritual influence. That's why I say, crucify him, crucify him. A mob. They were shouting. After the man has died, their head clears. The Judas that started the whole thing, his own head cleared. He went and committed suicide. Why is he now sorry? He's crying. The money he sold the man for, he can't even spend it anymore. He's so sad at what he has caused. His head has cleared. If you see the guys that caused the Rwanda genocide, their head has cleared. But over a million people have died. Crucify him. Crucify him. Mob action. God said, it's enough. But by the time God repented, <laughs> 70,000 people have died. Guess what? The president escaped. The prime minister escaped. The army general Joab escaped. Innocent people have died. That period when darkness fell on a good nation it was a time of plagues.
He said, even when the king has sinned, he should not be the king only praying. The nation should rise up to bring atonement for the land. Because the consequences will not be private. The consequences will not be private. You know, Jeremiah 29, find me in that place. He said, seek ye the peace of the nation where God has set, where you, you are caused to be carried away captive for in the peace thereof is your peace. 29, you can pick it up. You know, first of all, verse 1 is interesting. So then you can go to oh, verse 4. These, now these are the words that, of the letter of Jeremiah the prophet said, he sent from Jerusalem to the residue of the elders which are carried away captives to the priests, to the prophets, to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar has carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Even when it's another nation, that is not your country, the same principle I pray. Do you want to prosper there? Do you want to do business there and do well? You've got to pray for that land. Even when the company is not your company, you just walk there. You have to pray for that company. Practice it. You will see how fast, how much favor, how much peace, how much liberty, how much security you are going to be enjoying, how much favor you will enjoy in that place. You will see how many contracts you will start winning. You will see how many connections you start having to the high places. Study Daniel. You will see an example of somebody who did that and how he prospered. Even though they came to Babylon captive, the Bible said, Daniel said, I understood by the books the number of years that God has given to Jeremiah. He was reading this man's words. And Daniel chose to be different. To practice exactly the instruction that Jeremiah wrote to them. He came down to Babylon a captive too. But he learned that he can exercise influence over that land, even though it's a foreign land, and prosper tremendously in it. Look at what God said to them, verse 2, verse 4. Verse 4. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 5, yeah? Build houses. Dwell in them. Plant gardens. That start businesses, whatever. Then it was agriculture. as the type of business they do. Plant gardens. Eat the fruit thereof. Take wives. And raise children. Be God sons and daughters. Then take wives for your son. And give your daughters to husband. That they may bear sons and daughters. That ye may be increased there and not diminish. Prosper in your marriage. Prosper in your finances. Prosper in your spiritual life. I, even though you are in a foreign land, I want you to be moving ahead and prospering and multiplying. Then look at verse God. This is what God is saying. Seek the peace of the city or the nation where I have caused you to be carried away captive. Pray to the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof is your. Is what? Is your peace. In the prosperity thereof is your prosperity. In the progress of that nation is your progress. Are you telling me if Naira is just falls in value, we wake up tomorrow morning, Naira has lost half of its value. What will happen to all your savings in Naira? The aircraft you travel in affects you. So pray for the captain. The entire aircraft says, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. What about the aircraft? Okay, you cover yourself. Let the aircraft be open at attack. And then let's see what happens. You don't just cover yourself. You cover the captain and the aircraft. Of course, if you follow what I read, it said, Prayer, supplication be made for all men. You realize that there are people who are not saved. At least you, if you die, you're going to heaven. There are people here, if anything goes wrong, they die, they're heading to hell. So you're going to bring a covering over all of them. Because I'm here, everybody's life in this place is safe. The rest will be history. Daniel chapter 9. 
in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet. See one person who obeyed the instruction Jeremiah sent. Jeremiah wrote the letter and sent it to all of the people that had been carried away to captive in Babylon. The rest of the book of Daniel is the story of success that was created on the knees. From his becoming a prime minister to his surviving some of the worst administrations in history. Kings that will rise, the Bible would describe them as beasts. That's the way the scripture describes the Antichrist, the beast. And that's the way the Bible describes dictators. These are leaders that are under demonic anointing. Some of them are possessed. But even no matter how demonic you are, Daniel will prosper under your reign. Why? He will go in the spirit and control what is behind that throne. The spiritual controls the natural. Daniel chapter 1. Verse 20. In all the matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realms. The competitors of Daniel in his time were all occult men. You go for contract, occult men. You go for appointment, occult men. He only had three friends who understood the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob like him, who he could partner with to exercise influence in a whole nation that is covered with darkness and occultism. Yet, that king himself, who is an occult man, will find Daniel ten times better than all the other ones. Remember, he was a foreigner, not a citizen, and he's enjoying favor more than the citizens. If you know the power of prayer, but you are going to be sorted out this week. The Lord said, when you get to Abuja, shift the people into strategic positions. And I, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there. Watch verse 21. Thus Daniel continued. Now, this was Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, ruling. But Daniel continued to be in power until the first year of King Cyrus. He survived Nebuchadnezzar, Bashezer came, he survived him. Darius came, he survived him. Cyrus came, four administrations. By that time, he was an old man. He continued till Israel returned back to their own promised land. The scripture said Daniel who prayed for the restoration of Israel did not even go back with them. Why? He was a prime minister in the government that was reigning. So he made the way for people like Ezra, uh, Nehemiah, and others to go back and rebuild the nation while he was still ruling in government. From a young man, a teenager, that came down a slave till he was an old man in his 80s, he was ruling. Usually second to the highest person in the nation. Can prosperity be sustained for a lifetime? Yes, through prayer. Can wisdom be sustained? Yes. Can success be sustained? Yes. As long as you maintain your spiritual advantage, nothing can over upturn your advantage in the physical. It's when you lose ground in the spirit that you lose it here. A wise man said, if God says yes, nobody can say no. As long as you keep this, the supernatural to your advantage, nobody can dis, ups, you know, upstage you here in the natural. Look at chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2. 
verse 48. Another king has come now. This is Bathsheba. And the king promoted Daniel, gave him many great gifts. He made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. You are in our court, you are not in the old court. The man is ruling over all of them. He gave him many gifts. He has landed properties, he has houses, he has all kinds of things. The young boy that came in as a slave. Verse 49. And Daniel petitioned the king and he said Shadrach, Meshach and Abadnego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. That's how the Bible describes the seat of power. Ashorok. It's the gate, the roof on the gates. The guy knew I have three friends who are helping me to get this job done. Now that I'm in a position of advantage, I must always make recommendation for them to come. During Nebuchadnezzar, four of them enjoyed. Another king has come. Daniel said, they're promoting only me. No. He recommended three of them. When things start happening for you, take a group of brethren along. Because if you are alone there, surrounded with occult people, it's just a matter of time. One of these days, they will cut you down to size. Take a group of people who also know God, also people who have integrity. Just because the person attends church is not enough reason to take him. Make sure he has integrity. He doesn't go there and mess up the good work God is doing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You don't just be a prayer person. You must have character. In the corridors of power, they are looking for loyalty. They are looking for integrity. Trust is the scarcest commodity in that place. Including this year, Sorok. The biggest fear of the number one citizen is who to trust. Even among pastors, they don't know who to trust. Why? Integrity. Cultivate that scarce commodity. It will take you places in your organization. It will take you places in government. It will take you places in business. Stop cheating people. I was telling one of our brethren who sells all these Chinese. I said, make sure you let people know. Give them an option. This one, one million. But it's quality. But this one, no, it's cheap. 25,000 can get it. Let them know. Then he will buy it. He goes home. After some months, it spoils. He know you are a person of integrity. Next time, he will make up his mind whether he's going for quality or he's going for kakabu type. Don't go and tell people this one is this. You, 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 that business is not sustainable. An organization that does not have solid culture or values is not going, going to go very far. You might succeed for a moment. And I can keep showing you. I can keep showing you. When you get to chapter 10, you will see where Daniel had an open heaven and then Jeremiah Gabriel came to speak with him. And the angel was telling him, most of this prayer you pray, I'm the one that lead an army to do the business in your sin. Today now we are meeting. But I want you to know, Daniel, as long as you are a man of prayer, you are a partner with the angels. And I'm also promising all of you here, if you become a prayer person, you are working directly with angels. One of these days, you will get to meet one of them that you've been working with. Because you see things happen, it's the angels that walk in your scene. You are actually turning the positive supernatural into motion. And Gabriel said, I'm the one that has been working with you. So, it's just because you are asking some questions, you needed some intelligence, the father now asked me to appear and explain some things to you. You needed some things to be clarified. He said, for example, when you prayed about the kingdom of Persia, there is a spirit prince that was in charge of that kingdom that was causing all the trouble. But I led an army and we went and waged a war against it. 
when he delayed me for 21 days, Michael, the chief priest, came and took over that battle. That was why I broke through. He said, when I leave now, I'm going to fight with the prince of Greece. As long as you are a person of prayer, the supernatural world will be to your advantage. How dare you have all these problems going on around you and your angels are sleeping, drinking tea in heaven. They are not busy because there is nothing going on. It's when prayer is raised up, angels get busy. And these are the ones responsible for keeping Daniel in power. And not only keeping him in power, sustaining him and protecting him. Even if you have a beast ruling a nation, the man that understands the ministry of bended knees will still succeed. Even if you have a prince of Persia, it's not going to be good in that nation. It's not. But that man of prayer will still succeed. That doesn't mean you should allow your nation to be taken over by the beast. So I show you an angel that helped Daniel and we're going to turn it loose now to help you here in Abuja. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Daniel chapter 4. This time, Nebuchadnezzar needed to be removed from power. He has reached his peak. Pride has so filled his heart that, you know, he made a golden image and ordered everybody to worship it. And failure to worship it, he carried those three friends of Daniel, threw them into a burning furnace. God protected them. They didn't die. Nebuchadnezzar said, okay, everybody should now worship the God of Daniel because of that miracle. But years after, he got so proud again. This time he was looking over the whole Babylon. He has built the kingdom and was, you know, filled with pride. Look at the great empire I have built. Power has corrupting influence. And God decided that it's time to discipline him. And they sent an a group of angels called the heavenly watchers. These angels are very important when you pray for the nation. Because their job is to humble the mighty and exalt the lowly. Did you hear what I just said? If, if, you may not have any contact in government. If they come on your case now. You may not have connection in the high places. But you have a project that needs to be approved somewhere. The heavenly watchers are experts in picking a nobody and putting him there. Sometimes even kings that have had encounter with God like Nebuchadnezzar, as they consolidate power and succeed, corruption enters into their head. The same man I repented earlier declared that no other God should be worshipped. Carried the same three boys, threw them into the lions, then brought them out. Not lions, then I mean, um, burning furnace. He brought them out after he saw that God delivered them, promoted them. The same guy now is thinking that he is God. Anyway, in this particular episode, the heavenly watchers removed him from power for seven years. But they said, because, you know, because of that encounter he had with God, God didn't want him completely off. After seven years, he sent him to the bush, turned him to an animal, broke him in the wilderness, feathers grew on his body. The hair grew so much, it became like feathers or beds. That's how he didn't die of cold. The nails grew that became like crawls of vulture. And after seven years, his mind was removed and it, it, the, the, the soul of an animal, the mind of an animal, is what came upon him. After seven years, God lifted that sentence, divine sentence for him and brought him back. This time, he repented permanently. You see, let his heart be change from man's and let the beast's heart be given to him. For those of you who think that human beings and animals are the same, 
The difference is inside, not in the body. If you look at the body, you think we are animals. We are not. There is something inside. If you remove that thing from man, you can be roaming around in the street naked, sleeping in dustbin, eating like a pig. You can crawl around on the ground like a beast. There is something else God put there. It's called spirit, animal, soul. Man has soul, but man has something else. They just removed the valve. And Nebuchadnezzar fell to the state of an animal and existed like that for 